Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we did a lot of exploring up here around the Clockwork Sun. And we also inadvertently found the verdant fragment that had escaped, the one we needed to get to help out the incautious driver. I took it into my body, which was a little bit scary. And we need to take it back to the nature reserve to return it to its progenitor. But also, when we returned to London, there was a telegram waiting for the incautious driver, saying that apparently their father has died and we need to attend their funeral at New Winchester. And since I wanted to go back to the Reach anyway, because I've been gathering many quests to do stuff back in the Reach, I think that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, but before that, I have a level up to spend. I'm going to spend it on a mentor. For a time, you enjoyed the favor and protection of a mentor, someone who saw your potential and decided to nurture it. Who took you under their wings? Gonna go with a blind bruiser. His attempts to distance himself from his larcenous past were of mixed success. His guests were scarred and rough-spoken, and told bloody tales of smuggling and thief oaths and nameless murders. Gonna read a little bit that I wrote from uh, Elizabeth's character sheet. After running away from London on the first ship we could take, the earnest agitator and I stayed at a port for some months. We blew through our money and ended up sleeping rough. We stayed in this old abandoned factory for a while. Some other people were staying there too. That's where we met the blind bruiser. They knew how to survive, who to talk to, and who to avoid. He taught me the tricks of the trade. Just bought a bunch of fuel and supplies. Shouldn't really need that much, but, you know, never know if going through might take me to some place I didn't intend and I'll accidentally pop out through one of these wormhole weird things. <laughs> Who the hell knows? Let's head out. Almost at the relay. Man, remember this sight? All this machinery below me when I first came to Albion? just about as amazing as it was before. I need to present myself to customs before I can go. Shouldn't have anything that they want. They're busy, they stamp your form without even checking your cargo. Ah. So if I did have contraband, which is a literal item called contraband, I'm guessing one of the ways I can try to get it through is just by sheer luck. Maybe sometimes they search me, because they did when I came through from the other side, and other times, like right now, they're too busy and they just don't even check. Alright, can you use one of my eight Ministry Sam permits? Travel first class, whatever that means. I think this is the same description as before, right? Yeah. I feel like I've come home. Look at this place. <laughs> I feel so comfortable with this place. Like, I just... I just know it. I know the whole damn reach. Well, first stop, Port Prosper. I don't know if I have anything in particular to do here, but might as well stop. Let's get a port report. Oh, there's Apollonian cinders, right. I'm not going to deliver those because I distributed flyers on how those are dangerous. There's a fair going on. 
a celebration of the bounty and fortune of Port Prosper. There is an elderly lady, whispers surreptitiously, likely to be a Tambala. Uh, oh, I think we've seen this before. Genuine rubbery lumps sold by the cartful. <laughs> Let's run with a crew of Eastenders. Those are the, the impoverished people. Distracted tourists flush with unlovable items won from various stalls. Young ladies and gents, careless with their wedding bands. Barkers so intent on promising wonders of their reach far from the security of Port Prosper, they've forgotten to secure their own pockets. I think we've seen that description too. Gained, oh my god, I gained four uncanny specimens. A gunshot in the night. Pistols in the morning. The West Enders close ranks. Whoa. Aren't I still transporting a settler from Port Prosper that I picked up like half a year ago? <laughs> They've got to be pretty angry at this point. You already have a settler aboard, yes. Hmm. Doesn't seem like there's really anything to do here. Can't pass up a bargain. I don't need any supplies. I can't seem to get a port report. Which is very strange. That's very strange. Surely I didn't have a port report the entire time. Right? Unless... Oh, maybe the... Oh, the port report is probably only good for the region that you're in. So probably when I came to Albion, I came across Port Prosper to get to the relay. And of course I got a port report and then went to Albion. And then in Albion, nobody cares about Port Prosper, I guess. So I still have my port report for Port Prosper that I can turn in at New Winchester. That's probably it. All right, let's go to New Winchester. We have a funeral to attend. One fuel. And a gunfight. We're going to a funeral. Let's not get involved. Homestead. It's thriving. Eat your fill to reduce terror. I only have 2%, so I'm good. Trade a Sky Story for supplies. Sure. I have 53 of them. <laughs> That's totally reasonable. New Winchester. It hasn't been that long since I've been here, but I don't know. There's something just really... It makes me really happy about seeing New Winchester again. What is there to do? Oh, right. We needed to come back here to talk to the people that knew the, um, the earnest agitator. See if they know what happened to her. God, I hope she's okay. Um, got a bunch of stuff to do, I'm sure. Prospects. Um, we can do all that stuff later, like the prospects and, you know. Most of the inventory management will clear up a little bit of space, though. Let's do story stuff. First, escort the incautious driver home to the funeral. The Stainrod Mansion is draped in mourning black. The lady of the house stiffly greets her guests, nodding at every whispered word of condolence. A lady in mourning. The incautious driver's mother greets you, at, greets you both at the gate, her tone chillier than lustrum frost. The prodigal returns then, somewhat late, but I suppose better late than never. Your father would have been pleased to see the effort. Well, you'd better come in. What an asshole. Also, we literally came as fast as we could. The funeral party gathers on the main lawn behind the house, sipping wine and eating delicate sandwiches without crusts. Look for the incautious driver. They slipped away into the house, up to an old playroom. You find the driver in a dusty old playroom. A portrait hangs on the wall, showing a young boy and his younger sibling. My oldest brother and I, the driver confides. We aren't close. He was outdoorsy. Well, I spend most of my time in here. I almost died of a sky sickness as a baby. It took a long time to recover. I was very frail. Mother and father thought it best I stay indoors. I didn't mind. The world outside sounded terrible, full of monsters and diseases and accidents. I was happier with my toy trains and my window garden and my books. Seems odd. 
That's not what I would have expected. Somebody to have a childhood where they spent so much time indoors, and yet now they're a, a driver, right? They, I mean, they drive trains out into the skies. That's about as outside as you can get. Attend the funeral on the lawn. A bell rings. It's time for the ceremony. The ceremony is solemn. Members of the family take turns to lay flowers on the coffin and say a few words. The driver places a flower but says nothing. You find them later, in the shadow of a rose bush brought all the way from old London. It was father who said I should leave, you know. Their voice is quiet. I had to work, after all, and he knew I liked botany. He arranged a position for me at the nature reserve and booked passage on a reputable engine. First time I'd left New Winchester. Pick a rose or lay your hand on the driver's shoulder. It's... Elizabeth lays her hand on the driver's shoulder. The awkwardness of the moment should not keep you from offering comfort. I mean, we've known the incautious driver for... How long now? Like about a year and a half? Didn't we start the game around March 1905? We crashed within sight of our destination. When I stumbled in a port, I wasn't afraid of anything anymore. I thought I'd found my courage in the wilds. But it was the verdant, wasn't it? It colonized me. It took away my fear. The driver looks at the house, to the dark window of the playroom. When it's done with me, which version of myself will remain? They frown. Can we go now? Oh. So that's... that's why they're so different. Right, they've been colonized for a while. That's what makes them adventure like this. I thought they adventured and then they were colonized and taken over by the fungus, but no. Hmm. I wonder who they want to be. Like the uh, amenable host. Who do you want to be? Let's try to find the earnest agitator. The seasoned captains, the plucky baroness, the bedeviled didact, the masked citizen, and spatchcocker Meg have been assisting the earnest agitator with their investigations into the fate of the stars. But your friend has disappeared, and a mysterious fire claimed her lodgings and research. Your attempt to find her has reached a dead end. By continuing her research, you might learn what happened. Inform the captains that you will be taking your friend's place. It's time they put their cards on the table. The Alliance. Their faces darken as you recount your experiences in London. Intolerable, the masked citizen says, knuckles white around the stem of their glass. Of course we'll help, Meg grunts. The didact leans forward, his narrow face grim. Understand that each of us only has a piece of the puzzle. Our mutual friend insisted upon it. Only she would have the whole. She and now you. Indeed, we've each been pursuing a different strand of investigation, says the Baroness. Now we'll share them with you. Perhaps you can help us pursue them. Aid them in their investigations. Okay, we got a lot of things. Meg is investigating the fire that follows... Uh, politics of Heaven, The Courtesy, How Stars Die. I, this is so cool. This is this is going to teach me so much about something I'm super interested in. How stars work. Um, I'm guessing I can only do one at a time. I don't know. Let's just start from the top. This sounds good. Further the didact's research into the politics of suns. As we know, the suns, or more properly... Judgments are the regents and legislature of heaven. They establish the natural laws that govern existence. The kingdom of heaven. Kingdoms of heaven. With the assistance of our friend and the Royal Society's admiral, admirable telescope, I've been able to formulate some initial observations. Firstly, that the stars demonstrate social groupings. These have been classified into constellations and conjunctions. 
constellations are small and local, comparable perhaps to kin groups or clans. A sun's extended family, if you will. Conjunctions are rather grander. There are only a handful of them, perhaps three or four. It's possible they're co confederacies or nations. To say more, I require more data. Observations on and relics of the heavens. Bring them two otherworldly artifacts and two visions of the heavens. Well, I have more than enough for all of that. So constellations and conjunct conjunctions. Yeah, let's deliver. You visit his tiny corner office at the university, piled with books and grotesque curios. Pushing a stack of work off the desk, he turns immediately to your materials. You leave him to it. A week later, he calls you back to discuss his findings. He serves you black sweet tea, the cup and saucer rattling in his shaking hand. All study of the suns is difficult. The judgments are vast, ancient beings of incomprehensible complexity. Any investigation is also an act of translation, rendering their concerns and structures into analogies we can comprehend. Nevertheless, I believe I better understand the conjunctions that divide them now. Imagine vast nations, but founded upon philosophy, not geography. There are three primary... And they're trying to say something, but they're stuttering. Offer a helping hand? Well, listen, be patient. I don't know exactly what they're going to say. Be patient. Sip your tea. Conjunctions. The chrysanthemum conjunction are concerned with inception, with beginnings and newness. Their counterparts, the amaranthine conjunction, believe in culmination and bringing things to completion. And the Nepenthine conjunction advocates separation, distinction, isolation, the raising of barriers and the drawing of borders. He frowns. They do not get on. Okay, this sounded so important that I actually took a picture of it and wrote it down in my notes. Um, so just to reiterate it, we have three different conjunctions. The conjunctions being distinct, uh, like extended families. And they're made not by geography, but by philosophy. So the conjunction, the family of stars called the chrysanthemums, they, their philosophy is about inception and beginnings and newness. The amaranthine conjunction, they're the opposite of the chrysanthemums. They believe in culmination and bringing things to completion. And the nepenthine conjunction wants separation, distinction, isolation, barriers, and the drawing of borders. Yeah, that is very important. They don't get on. So I'm guessing one of the conjunctions is, uh, well, one of the conjunctions probably killed one of the other conjunctions at uh, Old Tom's well. Remember the well seed was used to kill the sun? I think the sun is like at the bottom of the well or something like that. They drowned it figuratively or literally. The messenger is the one that delivered it, but the messenger was an agent of some sort of a son. So yeah, probably delivered by a, a rival conjunction. Agree to transport the didact on a research trip. Whoa. Okay, sure. I must consult a primary source, the role of ash. I believe it will shed light on the friction between the conjunctions. There is a library in the Blue Kingdom at the Forge of Souls. <laughs> yes, I will take you. But uh, it's going to be about 100 episodes till I go to the Blue Kingdom. I got to finish with Albion and then Eleutheria. A new traveling companion. He begins to pack his things, mostly books and a jangling collection of amulets and talismans he retrieves from his shelves. I'm unsure exactly what the role of Ash is or contains. I know that it is the work of the courtesy, a topic which our masked friend is looking into. Some of our strands are beginning to tie together. Currently, the role is in the keeping of someone called the Lamentation of Mists. He boards your engine gingerly. I've curtailed my travel lately, he says, peering suspiciously at the stars. 
Increasingly, I believe some things are best left undiscovered. I understand it's definitely dangerous business. Going anywhere, really, exploring, but especially messing around with the judgments. Talk to Mang about the fire that fall. Actually, no. Um, let's talk about the courtesy, since that was just mentioned. Aid the citizens' investigation into the courtesy. The phrase, the courtesy, appeared several times on the scraps you recovered from your friend's lodgings. The citizen is already immersed in an investigation. Unfortunately, I haven't got very far, they confess. Is it a person? An organization? A process? My usual sources are ignorant or reticent, which is itself informative, of course. I suspect that the courtesy is not merely little known, but actively concealed. A conspiracy. Then what is your next step? We should try our luck at Pan. It's a place where many secrets come to roost, and people there are willing to discuss topics others fear to. Let me know when you're ready to depart. Take them to Pan. I don't know where Pan is. I don't know what that is. Talk to Meg about the fire that follows. The phrase was mentioned in the notes you retrieved from your friend's lodgings. Pretty sure it's a monster, Meg says, wiping her nose on her sleeve. A fire that's a monster. A living flame. Did some asking around. If you want to know about a monster, ask another monster. That's what I've been doing. I've been told it's a living flame, and it burns blue. Sound familiar? You remember the description of the mysterious fire that consumed your friend's lodgings. Yeah, our friend was afraid of the fire. She was always a clever girl. Anyway, next on my list for a chat is Mr. Menagerie. He's... <laughs> First read that is, he's armless enough. Because literally it says he's armless enough. Yes, they have just few enough arms that I can speak with them. <laughs> but no, it's a shortened version of harmless. He's armless enough for a bat-faced aberration. But he don't talk for cheap. Four caged catches should help replenish the stock. Let me know when you're ready to go. Four caged catches. Do I have any caged catches? That would be somewhere here. Actually, no, that'd be somewhere here in possessions. Is this it? No, that's a condemned experiment. I remember there was somewhere recently in Albion where I could actually pay to get a caged catch. Don't remember exactly where. I don't think I have any, actually. Just these condemned experiments. Oh, this just revealed to me that Whirlbury Juxtamare, Juxta again, I forgot how to pronounce that. I'll look it up at some point. Is in Albion. I didn't know that. It's a name we've heard a couple times. Assist the Baroness in her examination into how sons die. She arranges to meet you at her family home, an elegant townhouse on the edge of New Winchester. You know, the thing about how sons die is that I don't think we've seen a son that died of natural causes. How many sons have we seen? There's one in the Reach that has been blown apart. Faith's fall up here. There's one in Albion. There's one in Albion also looks all blown apart. Right next to the most serene mausoleum. Oh, there's actually another one in the Reach, isn't there? I'm going the wrong direction. I should go this way. Yeah, there's another one in the Reach. One that we can't really see, but we've heard it described that there is a son at the bottom of Old Tom's Well. That one obviously didn't die of natural causes. We haven't seen any sons die of natural causes. They seem to die just by violence. Extreme violence. T. Port and an array of biscuits await you in her drawing room. The Baroness helps herself to all three. Let me bring you up to speed. I've been looking into what it would take to kill a son. We know two local sons have died. That of Albion and that of the Reach. Our dear Ernest Agitator and I were preparing an autopsy. She'd acquired a sample of... What would be the term? Post-necrotic celestial tissue? Son's blood? 
Anyway, a sample of that from the remains of Albion's son. That leaves the reach. She offers you a plate. More biscuits? I think you're missing the one at the bottom of Old Tom's well, but I wouldn't want to try to get a sample from that one. <laughs> don't go to the bottom of the well. I don't think you're going to come back up. Interesting thing here. Um, our dear Ernest Agit... Oh, wait. Oh, never mind. I misread that. For some reason, I misread the Ernest Agitator as the incautious driver. Never mind. Could we perhaps focus on the dead sons? There's no son's corpse in the reach. What? Yes, there are. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. There's no son's corpse in the reach. Well spotted, she says, toasting. You've been looking into that, and I think I know where it ended up. Wait, what do you mean? Huh? There is a... Son. There's absolutely a dead son. It's right up here. Is that maybe for if you haven't found it yet? Because you could totally get to this point without finding it. There's no reason you have to find it. You don't have to go through this place. You could get up to Hybris through this way. Hmm. I almost want to choose that just to see what the heck happens, but no. Uh, why not? They make a change from the awful fungal crackers you have to eat aboard your locomotive. That's in reply to the more biscuits. They're good, aren't they? As I was saying, I've ordered some specialized equipment from Portsmouth House. Unfortunately, they've run into complications during development. I've put together some materials that should help unstick them. She indicates a trunk of papers and components. But I imagine they'll need more if they're to complete it soon enough. Perhaps you could help. Travel to the Royal Society. I haven't found the Royal Society either. Yeah, and it looks like I can't take the others on board. It says you're already carrying one of the captains to finish your business with them first, so you can't take them all on board. One at a time. So these are going to have to wait for really quite a while. But it's okay. I'll wait as long as it takes to get the truth. Well, I feel like this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to go all over the freaking reach because we have a lot of quests to follow up on just off the top of my head at the nature reserve at Carillon, at Magdalene's at Port Avon probably just about everywhere <laughs>